attention. This will be of directors. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by using, utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. Instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. All public comments shall be addressed to the board of directors and limited to three minutes per speaker. The board of directors may choose to respond to comments or request staff to respond at the conclusion of the public, public comment. All right. Um, Shall we start with roll call, please? Sure. Board President Ruggieri. Here. Uh, Director Case, who I see is not here. Uh, Director Kilkenny. Uh, he will not be here this evening. He let me know uh, earlier today that he had a, uh, uh, something else come up he can't attend. Gotcha. Uh, Director Kilkenny. Here. Director Oyserman? Here. And Director Shea? Here. Thanks. I'm marking Director Case absent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Item B, agenda. We are going to adopt this agenda. Um, any, any comment from the board? All right. Anything from the public? Yeah, one second. Steven. Yeah. All right, moving on to... I do have one comment, sorry. Do, oh, since ahead. Case, since Director Case isn't here, we shouldn't um, move the discussion about the bylaws again, right? Eric, what do you want to do? Uh, you that's up to you guys as the board. Um, I'm okay to move it again if we want to wait till all of the board members are present. I just think because the point was there was questions that new board members were having and yes. it would be silly to, yeah. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll, we'll table, we'll table the, the bylaws discussion. Okay, so we're, we're going to approve agenda with the amendment that we're removing the... E4. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. E4. Correct. All right. Thank you, Director Oyserman. Um, so moving on to next item, consent calendar. Um, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar and tabling item E4 for when well, Director Case is present? Uh, you're, you're, I'm sorry, Lisa, I don't mean to interject, but we're getting two different uh, agenda topics in the same thing here. So ultimately, because okay. you're, you're tabling the, you're changing the agenda, you should probably take a vote on changing that um, okay. and, then, and then move to the consent calendar. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I learned something new every day. Okay. <laughs> All right. So first we have a vote on amending the consent calendar. Move yeah. to adopt the agenda minus E4. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, any comment from the board? Oh, wait, we don't do comments here. Anything no, from the public on the consent calendar? No, there was not. No, no. You, you can okay. just- uh, Agenda. Yeah, okay. on, on okay. the agenda, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. You wanna vote? Right. So we vote? Yes. President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Yes. Director Oyserman. Aye. And Director Shea. Got it. Thanks. Okay. So now we're moving on to the consent calendar. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, um, 
Move to uh, <clears throat> approve the consent calendar as it stands. I'll second. All right. Anything from the public? Uh, yeah, one second. Steven. Uh, yes. Uh, with regards to the consent calendar, um, I think these remote meetings are great, but um, as soon as practical, I believe uh, uh, Marinwood should fall in line with uh, other jurisdictions and uh, continue them, but also allow for people to come in uh, to the community center and participate. Um, and I think that would be a rather simple thing. All you basically need is a uh, uh, another terminal uh, available for, for people to speak. Um, the second thing is the uh, election. Um, we have a problem in our uh, district that uh, we don't do elections. I don't believe any of you were elected except for Bill Shea, who I helped get elected uh, eight years ago or whatever. Um, and I, while you're resolving to hold an election, I think uh, you need to also make a commitment to publicize the fact that um, elected positions are going to be available this fall. Um, with regards to specific uh, items on the consent calendar, I note uh, that last month I think we, we, we thought we were at the end of paying out for our construction costs, and you notice there's another hundred thousand dollar bill, or maybe maybe not. Maybe that was in the last one. I don't I don't recall, but it's it's a fairly sizable amount, and I'm just wondering when we're going to get the, to the end of paying uh, our contractor for uh, the maintenance uh, project. Um, so uh, perhaps uh, we could get some information on that. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Um, moving on to uh, agenda item D. Oh, slow down. Sorry, Lisa. We need a, uh, you have a motion and a second, but we don't have a vote. All right, let's vote. Board President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Kilkenny. You're muted, Kathleen. Aye. Thanks. Director Oyserman? Aye. And Director Shea? Aye. Thanks. All right, thank you. So let's then move on to item D, public comment open for time for items not on the agenda. Yeah, one second, please. So these meetings could go better, at least from my perspective, if uh, there would be some answers to simple questions. I just asked about the expense uh, that we're putting out for the maintenance project. I got no response. It seems to me that it is in the public interest to reveal how much we're spending. And, um, you know, I, it's kind of frustrating. Um, you want to limit... Uh, you want to limit time that we can speak, but uh, you don't really want to engage unless it's to counter something I, I have said or objected to, uh, but we actually never get the uh, dialogue that is necessary for a good, healthy, democratic process. Um, each one of you has a very important um, position for the community. You basically are setting the agenda for the future. And um, I would, you know, you guys weren't elected. You, you really never put out a vision to the uh, community. Uh, you have spurned the idea of a, uh, a community-wide meeting. Um, I'm just wondering what some of you think about uh, being a representative uh, for Marinwood uh, means? Is it simply just to, you know, uh, take care of your own personal agendas, or is it 
for the agenda uh, for the entire community. I hope it's for the entire community. But the best way to, to do that is actually engage in a public process. Those of you who choose to run this fall, I hope you will be very public. Um, I haven't decided whether or not I want to throw my hat in the ring and you know deal with all the stuff that that would entail, but it may be the only way that uh, dialogue uh, with the community gets accomplished. Um, for far too long, things have happened behind closed doors. It's gotten worse in recent years as uh, there has been um, uh, a kind of a secretive process set up, uh, and I, I, I really object to it. I, I do think that the new board members have their, their heart in the right place, and I just would like to see more of uh, that good heart uh, out in the community. Thanks. Stephen, I appreciate the feedback. Any other public comment? No. All right. So then moving on to district matters. Um, number one, park maintenance facility exterior courtyards project. Accept bid from lowest qualified bidder and response to notice inviting bids and authorized staff to enter into contract with lowest qualified bidder. Yeah, I can take this from here if you'd like. I tried to give you guys a uh, fairly detailed staff report on what this was. Uh, as you knew, we had an RFP that was out and publicly noticed. Uh, in total, we had three different construction firms, contractors, uh, request to be added to the plan holders list and perform site visits. Of those three, only one submitted a bid. Um, so we are here with the sole bidder from Massa Construction Company, a local firm. Uh, these, uh, the bid itself is in the packet. Um, I have spoken with the owner and president, a gentleman named Ken Massa, several times now since we received his bid. He's actually done a secondary site visit with myself and the project architect um, just as recent as yesterday, uh, just trying to look at what we have in front of us and what some of our options are. Um, I've given you kind of your formal options that fall within the public contract code um, that are stated in the report with, you know, one being... You could simply choose to do nothing at this time. You can reject the bid. And with rejecting the bid, you can reissue an RFP uh, without any changes in hopes of attracting additional bids. You can instruct staff to redesign the plans and reissue in hopes of receiving lower bids. Um, or you can simply uh, reject and abandon the project as conceived and uh, have staff kind of back to the drawing board. Um, or you can accept the bid submitted by MASA uh, and authorize staff to execute contract with the bidder. Uh, obviously, all of those have further uh, consideration factors that go into it. Um, I've tried to detail out those to the best of my ability. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that I can that, I can, that you might have uh, as this moves forward. Um, you know, some of the other I, things to put in mind here is especially due to that we have a sole bidder um, entering into contract on the base bid uh, and then working with the contractor via change order to explore possibilities for the eastern courtyard, which would be the far side from Miller Creek Road, uh, is certainly acceptable. The contractor certainly seems very uh, willing to engage in these conversations and uh, I believe could have some, some good ideas on things that we could do to further value engineer that side. Um, so I'm actually fairly confident that we can get something done there, um, but none of that matters if we can't get into contract with the sole bidder. Um, so with that said, um, you know, I do have an extensive thing. It'd probably be easiest at this point just to take any questions. My formal recommendation as staff at this time is to accept the base bid received with L04, which would put the uh, 
West Courtyard uh, base cost at 258 800 uh, I do believe there might even be some opportunity through reductive change orders to get that down a little bit, but not a heck of a lot, to be entirely honest with you. Um, that courtyard involves extensive grading, grading, civil engineering, draining, retention, and uh, uh <laughs> and then the fences and the gates and everything else. So there's not a lot of wiggle room in that um, on that side, but again, just trying to maximize efficiencies. And I think we also have a contractor here that uh, as uh, you know, any potential market changes in our favor, he would honor for us. Um, that said from there, you can always consider the other adults that were presented in the packet uh, most of them were material changes. And then obviously the big one on the Eastern courtyard. And then we also added in the construction of the pathway to kind of get a, uh, a sense on uh, uh, outside costs for doing that. If we didn't uh, perform this in house, I actually do believe that there's a lot of room uh, to work with the contractor on that as well. And I wouldn't recommend getting into that at this point in time, I would uh, recommend allowing us to kind of refine and clarify uh, some questions in the scope of work on that with the contractor. Um, and then if you do accept the base bid to then uh, basically direct staff uh, to continue to work with the contractor and opportunities to value engineer the Eastern courtyard and report back to the board with options uh, and a potential change order for formal approval. Another option that you have is to accept the base bid and then authorize staff on a not to exceed amount uh, for change order totals on the Eastern courtyard, if you wanted to as well. Uh, otherwise I'd be happy to bring it back, but we, that might mean calling a special meeting. So we're not waiting for another month to make any further decisions. Um, I have a question. Um, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for going through that. Um, and for, for, you know, the, the, the work that went into getting these, this bed. Um, it looks like there was, there were more than, there was more than one company that considered bidding on the project and only one did. Correct. Do, do we have any, do we know why? I don't know why. I was actually surprised when the bid deadline came and we only got the one bid. I haven't reached out to the other uh, two uh, firms that were on the plan holders list to inquire as to why they didn't eventually submit a bid. I actually got calls from a couple of uh, subcontractors that were contacted by one of those companies just with some clarifying questions. Um, so no, I don't know why. I just think that you know construction is busy, labor is short. Uh, skilled labor is even in shorter supply right now, and that reduces the capacity of overall firms. This isn't a large project. Uh, in fact, it's relatively small as far as public works contractors goes. It's barely above the threshold to qualify for sealed bidding. All right. Thank you. Um, and then I guess another question I had was, did, did we have a, a, a budget in, in mind when we went into this originally? I know that this is probably more than what we were expecting, but what's the delta? Well, when we went into, when this was included in the original uh, bid proposal as an adult, uh, the two courtyards were $377,000. Uh, with that also said, I think I should add the caveat that as uh, the main building got done and the grading was done, we actually uh, discovered the need and added into this um, some further drainage that's going to go from the Western courtyard. So that would have developed into a change order into the original, uh, the original proposal that was approved a year ago with Murray building. Um, that would have certainly pushed that up probably, you know, easily closer to the 400,000 mark. Uh, in that time, I have done some research. I was actually just reading an article yesterday that was in the business times that showed, I believe it was a 21% increase uh, continuing from April of 21 to April of 22 in the overall costs of construction. Uh, when we decided a year ago to put this on, I, you know, we were optimistic that uh, the construction market would stabilize and ideally uh, uh, cost of materials and things would come down. There's just been a lot of global events that continue to drive prices up and there is still a, uh, a shortage of skilled labor. And that's one thing I've heard from a lot of contractors is it's hard for them to take on multiple projects at a time right now because they, they don't have the skilled labor available to them. Thank you. Other questions, comments from the board? Go ahead, Savan. So would it be worthwhile before 
I mean, we need to make a decision on what we think about this, but would it be worthwhile to reach out to the other companies? I mean, probably the answer is just that they don't have the I don't think we staff. can. Are we well, allowed to? The deadline. I, I can certainly reach out to them, but the bidding deadline is passed. This is a right. regimented no, no. process. Well, they needed just... to put it in by this point in time. Otherwise, you're talking about going back out to RFP and hoping that they put something else in, which is certainly no guarantee. Right. So that's kind of like what my question was like. I don't want to go out to RFP if we don't think that we're going to get any other bids. If it's just going to be this guy who's now going to basically say, you know, screw this. I don't want to work with you guys since you didn't like well, my or he's the only one who puts yeah. a bid in and it's fifty thousand dollars right. or seven thousand right. dollars higher because exactly so those are my concerns but then i was like wondering if it was like a labor thing that we can't help or if it was something else that there's a reason why i i don't know i'm just trying to kind of brainstorm a little bit because i while this is more than we were hoping, it does need to get down. We need to be able to have a pathway for our constituents to walk through. We need to have a space for our men to be able to do their work. So it's, you know, kind of between a rock and a hard place in terms of the cost and only one bid and needing to really get this work done so that things can get moving for both um, staff and the community. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, I would. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, I mean, and there's also there's also the risk that that the that the cost will just increase from keep here. going. Yeah, and which is it's gonna because everything's increasing, and you know, inflation now. So, so I have a question, just so I understand the stuff on the like the 266. Is that because material stuff is changing from the original bid? Uh, you're looking at the at all. Yes, those are just yeah. different materials. So I mean, I can kind of go through these. I know it's a little bit tricky. The original material was for a uh, was for an ash uh, wood. We had one adult to change the material from ash to uh, ipe, and then another adult to change the material from ash to um, kiln dried redwood. Uh, they all kind of have their pros and cons. I think with the uh, the redwood, it's most readily available. It is the cheapest. It takes a little bit more maintenance in the long run to keep it looking nice and, ma and maintained. It you know, kind of fades and eventually over time doesn't have nearly the lifespan of, say, uh, the Ipe um, or the uh, ash that was put into the original bid proposal. Um, uh, and then it's the same also for the eastern courtyard. So that's what the changes are with redwood being the most readily available and lowest cost um, fencing material. The nice thing about the redwood, I would say, is in the event that any level of repairs or things need to be done to it, it is much more readily available. Our staff are able to make those repairs. Uh, the other wood is an incredibly hard wood that does last a long time, but in this setting and in the event that something were to, uh, some level of damage was to happen to it, it's a little bit tougher to procure and it's a little bit tougher to work with uh, for our staff as well. So there is a chance that we can be looking at 204, 400 versus- no. No, the 204-400, I'm sorry, is for the eastern courtyard. So the what if you're staring at the building, the, you know, the west courtyard is the one that's closest to Miller Creek. That mm -hmm. is an essential component, having the west courtyard put on, because that ultimately kind of secures off the building, because that Correct. end of the building is open-faced. Uh, and that's where, you know, kind of rolling stock and another, uh, you know, garage area is at. So that's Correct. what closes off and secures the whole building. The eastern courtyard is the courtyard that was designed for the other side of the building, um, farther down the trail, so to speak. And that one is not as mission critical in the sense that um, it, it doesn't kind of provide that added, you know, needed layer of security. Uh, there is, you know, doors on that side. Um, we would certainly look and come back as a staff on trying to solution that if eventually we can't work with the contractor on getting that one done. Um, it certainly wouldn't have the same uh, level of aesthetic or uh, uh, quite honestly quality if we did that in-house. It's not totally infeasible. And I've talked to our uh, maintenance staff already about it. It, it can be done. Um, but it, it also, it, it, it would 
let's put it that way, a contract so, result. Um, but there, is there, there a options. reason why we can't? Is there no wood on the east side or the west, which the Miller Creek side that we uh, can't use redwood then for that? Or is that, that that's what the 204 represents redwood <laughs> on the east side? So if you look at adult 01A, 01B, and 01C, yeah. that, is, that all represents the eastern side. So, so on the, the, is there wood on the western side? Yes, on both sides. And we can't put redwood on the western side? Uh, we can. That's what adult 04 is. Right. And the recommendation is that we continue with the, with the base and then the adult 04. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, that is correct for a couple of reasons and primarily because it's also the, uh, the most affordable option in the immediate. I, I do think, you know, it's kind of flip a coin between going with something like the Ipe in that, uh, in theory, it lasts, the quality of the wood is much, much higher. It's a much harder wood. It'll, it lasts forever. Um, but then again, if there is some level of damage to it, it's a little bit more difficult to repair as well when the uh, redwood, if there's damage to it, is much more readily available and easier to repair. Okay, so then we're looking at the 258-800 versus the 272 four, seven. Correct. I apologize if that was okay. confusing. Okay. No, so it's, so and then with the either or, because I was thinking I was adding them together. For a no, no. So it's right now it's either or with the possible thing of Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, going and negotiating adult 01C. Correct. Yeah. Basically uh, trying to value engineer that with the contractor. I wouldn't say it's negotiating with them as much as it would be <laughs> representing some uh, changes in design that we could potentially incorporate that would help bring the overall cost of it down. And then that would be incorporated as a change order after, after the, uh, uh, after the original contract, which at this point, my recommendation is the 258, 800 uh, uh, option. Can I not, and nothing with the east side. Uh, no, to keep exploring the east. But again, that doesn't mean that we can't. Uh, you know, it, I guess a lot of it depends, Kathleen. To be honest with you, on you know what the board's appetite to spend is. I mean, the district does have the funds on this. I, uh, but I, I do think that if you're looking at say adult 01 dash C. Uh, which is the third one down at the 204-400. I do think that there's some room to bring that down, and I would certainly probably encourage doing that given the cost that these came in on. Can I tell you exactly how much I think we can bring that down? No, I don't know immediately off the top of my head. I think that would have to be kind of explored uh, with different materials. But, you know, some of the uh, options you're looking at is, you know, both of these have a cement um, foundation around where the fences are going to go. You need that mm -hmm. cement foundation on the western side because of the grading that's going to happen it's going to also serve as a uh, level of retainage um, for the earth and that's there um, so you have to have that I, on the eastern side it's not as much it's a little bit uh, you know for uniformity it kind of comes in there and it certainly would last a lifetime but there is also opportunity to look at other type of uh, foundation that can go along the bottom there as well but so just so i understand our options if we decline the east courtyards then we either put it back at bid or no. hold, wait, well, let me finish or our guys do it. No, no, not entirely. Uh, it wouldn't go back out to bid. You would be working on this as, because you have no other bidders on this project. You would be working on that as a potential change order with, right. with the contractor that would be selected based on the base bid. So right. it would actually come back as a, as a potential change order with that contractor uh, based on any any additional value engineering we might be able to, to achieve with the contractor. Right. And that went, so that would with, not which, come back to the board. Uh, it which, certainly with could. With contractor. The contractor that bid on this project. Awesome. The, one, the one that we got a bid from. So we're going to be but using do, the same contractor for all of it. We're not going to take pieces of this and bid it out to other contractors, right? Is that, is, am I understanding that correctly? That's, yes, that's how I envision it, correct. But that, but that's my question is it doesn't have to be, we could choose to take out the East side if we wanted to, correct? But Kathleen, nobody else is going to bid on it. So I, if we either do it I, with them or we do it in house. I'm right? not, I'm, I'm just asking a simple question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like we could, if we choose to, we could choose to take this out 
go. I'm not saying we're going to, I'm just trying again, I was processing this. And then, or if we, and then if, if we choose not to put it out and we decline it from this builder, then we possibly have our guys do it. Correct. And it may not be from what Eric said, looking the same as what the Western. No, I, I understand yeah. all the details. No, no, I just, I'm just stating the multiple. No, no, I know. I know. Levels, I, yeah. I get all that part. I'm just trying to process. So if we keep the East side, then we would go with, zero one C for 204. So then we're looking at a total of 204, 400 and 258, 800. Unless Eric can possibly change things on add alt. Zero but that's what's in C. front of us right now. So that's right. what we would have to mm, approve. Well, right we now. could also approve going with add alt four and saying to him, we approve that we want you to discuss adult 1C and we could either say discuss and come back to us or discuss and we approve anything up to this amount. So if we decide we're willing, just randomly putting out a number to only do $180,000, don't quote me on this, I'm just putting a number out yeah. there for adult 01C, then he could go back, say we're taking adult four, but I'd like to talk to you about doing a change adult order zero for add out zero one. And I, you know, and negotiating with him and not negotiating, but like talking about the materials the and order. the change orders. Yeah. And, and if, order. and if the change order comes down to 180,000, Eric can go ahead and just agree to it because as a board, we've said you can spend up to this money. If it's 181,000, he has to come back to us. We have to do a special board meeting and um, discuss it and approve it, and then he can go back. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. Okay. I, I think she that was well stated, uh, Savan. Thank you. Yeah. That was that was good. I uh, gone through enough of these. I think I'm starting to get yeah. it. <laughs> well, and the other thing, I you know, I just want to be very clear. It's you know, it's where the board stands on their comfort level to do a, a to incorporate an up to change order at this point in time for a financial amount, or the board can easily just say work with them on this and come back to us regardless with the change order. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to state that those are your, uh, your correct. It's not your only option at this point in time, but it is certainly an option and it's allowable. Now I do have a question. If we do say yay to alt four, go talk about change order. Will for alt one, would that delay work being done? No. Okay. So it wouldn't like prolong it. It would no. just, okay. I just want, cause that's also something that is in consideration because the longer the work's going on there, the lot, the more time that the public can't use that area properly and the guys are not able to do their jobs properly. Right. right. So, yeah. So if we put a, a budget on any augmentation to alt one C that can also, I think, make it more expedient from a process perspective, right? But so. it's not necessary. No, okay. Is, is there a completion date in here? Uh, we have a 60 day completion date that was put within the uh, thing. Technically we okay. are, our temporary uh, certificate of occupancy uh, or occupancy certificate uh, expires on October 1st. The county would greatly like us to be able to close out this entire permit by October 1st. Uh, I would like to have that I done like too. To. We did put a 60 day uh, uh, completion in here. One of the things I did talk with the contractor about is, you know, there is potentially some wiggle room in there. If that helps with the value engineering and bringing down the overall cost, we, we do, we could extend that a little bit, but it still wouldn't go past that end of September date. So if you're looking at, you know, June 14th right now, July, August 14th, roughly. So then you could be pushing it more into closer to the middle of September. If allowing that then allows him to uh, reduce cost on the overall project, I think that would be well worth it. I guess I have one last question. Um, when we had talked and also when we, when I read through, there was the note that the longer this is standing, the longer we have our stuff that we're renting. Correct. If we just did the West, and decided to try to do the east on our own, would we still need to be renting things? 
Uh, no, we would have, uh, once the West is completed and done and approved, we are able to actually start moving things in and the guys can start turning it into a functional facility and, uh, okay. and going from there. And then shortly thereafter, I mean, the trailer would be able to come out almost immediately because uh, we would be able to use what the, the maintenance facility would work quickly for that. So the trailer, which is something that we rent would be gone. Okay. Uh, and then the fencing might take a little bit longer, especially around the other area while they get everything moved before we can take all of that down. And then, um, and then the guys can start to re-turf and re-stabilize that area as it used to be before we moved the temporary setup there. <laughs> and then on the uh, exterior fencing around the project, um, that can be, you know, if not eliminated, greatly reduced. Um, but, you know, you still have the pathway uh, to kind of go to, but some of that work can probably start to happen. I don't know. That that would be a, probably a better question for Luke and something a little bit more in detail for us to talk about. But uh, it definitely starts the process of eliminating all of those. Okay. Can I propose something? And then, sorry, Lisa, I'm being very bossy here. Do you no, want to do go it? ahead and propose, Siobhan. <laughs> okay. I'm going to propose that we consider telling Eric to do adult four as he suggested with the change of order possibility for adult one um, due to the fact that adult one C. Sorry. Um, due to the fact that Case isn't here, I don't know if I feel 100% comfortable putting a number down. I, I'll kind of defer to you guys for like telling Eric like up to 180, say yes, anything more, touch base with us. I would, I guess, prefer because Case is not here that we have him do the change of order, talk to him and then touch base with us. Um, and if that means doing a special meeting so we can get this done, so be it. Um, what are people's thoughts? I mean, I think that makes sense. Um, because ultimately, Eric would be reporting back on what was possible anyway. Yeah. So I, I think that that could be a good solution um, and not cost us any additional time really but then it would also allow the flexibility to see what 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 might be possible yeah i just personally i would like to get both the east and west done i know it's a more money than we were hoping when we said no to it originally but i think having everything kind of going at the same time being completed so that the public can use it our guys can use it. It looks nice. And then they can do the trail, right? I just feel like it's a better use of everybody's time and the money that we have um, because we've been putting money aside and then we have the measure A funds and just I'd like to get this wrapped up and done so that we can figure out the other things that we have to do since we do have limited manpower. And like, we need to finish one project before we start the next. I agree with 90% of what you say. What's the 10% you don't like, Kathleen? I would like to keep his approval to negotiate. I agree that maybe hopefully we can get it down to 180, but I don't mind approving at the 204, 400. So then we don't have to meet again if it, is that because if you're what you're saying is anything above 180 we have to meet again and i don't know how i don't know this builder i don't know how much he's willing to discuss and change anything but i also don't want to delay it right. over twenty five thousand dollars. well i think I, I don't think savon wanted to put a number on it right because case isn't here to i was unless eric right? talked to case and case had said to him he was good with both of them these numbers i just i want it's a it's a substantial i understand that for contractors this isn't a big number but for no. our district it's a big number and i want to make sure that we have all of our board members being able to say yay or nay on these additional alts That's correct but my my issue with that is 
is that and there's no disrespect by this, but the agenda was sent out last week. So had this been a topic that he really wants to give his two cents and not and have a voting number to it, then I feel like he should be here. I don't think that it's fair for us to have to call a separate meeting. And again, Chris, if you watch this video, no disrespect, but I don't feel that it's fair that we, you. we all came together tonight to discuss this. And then because he had a previous engagement or whatever it is that we have to come back together to reapprove something. But it really is. We got to get this done. Okay. The All right. So why don't we do building. this? Why don't we, why don't we? Bell has his hand raised. He's not talking oh, out like please, us. We please go, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yes, just wait, I'm biding my time. I'd like to uh, amend Savans and include alt number two because the pathway is a, that would be the finishing of the job. So if Eric can work his magic into talking to um, Mr. Massa and uh, as they're doing the Western Courtyard, um, looking at ways in which to reduce, because he's going to be grading. That's the most important thing. And yeah. basically putting the paths in is going to be grading also. On the, on the east portion, it's not so much grading as it is fill. So I think we should go ahead and approve this. And with the change orders coming possibly on C and 2. That's my suggestion. So then our grand total would be? Five, yes, three, two hundred. Yeah, it would be big. Way to go, Bill. Thank you. Big or go home. No. Hey, I um, just want it done. I want to finish his, this. His name is Bill. Done. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we got jokes this evening. <laughs> nice. So, Eric, um, in terms of doing all of it, do we have the cash on hand to do that? Yeah, we have the finances to do it. That's okay. Uh, that is there. Okay. So right. what if what if we amend, okay, restating, saying yes to alt four and asking to, God, what was the word? Not amend. What was the word again? Change just, order. They yeah. change order. order for both alt 1C and alt 2. And did we want to give him a number? Did we no. want to say no. No. 210? No. 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 He's going to try okay. and lower it. It's not going to get any lower unless Eric tries. Okay. Right. I think he tries, um, but if not, then we proceed forward. And right. so we're, we're okay with this number. But we would prefer if he can negotiate, not negotiate. But you know what I mean? Request a change order. Request a change <laughs> order. I can't, I, the, the negotiate thing is still stuck in so my head. So do we have MBAs. to make a, do we need do we to have, have to make a motion? Well, I Eric? think we need, do we need public comment before we make a motion, Eric? No. Uh, you don't need motion. public, you can make a not motion. Not before a motion. First. Okay. Just one motion. Motion can come first. So will someone make a motion? So Bill? I yeah. make a, oh. Go ahead. No, Kathleen, go I ahead. make a motion to approve adult 04 for the Western Courtyard, West Courtyard with adult 02 for the pathways and then add alt 01C for the East Courtyard at the amounts that are on the bid with granting Eric permission to request change orders. Is that correct? Sounds, Eric, is that, that, right? sounds, that sounds good. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. To be very clear on how I heard that. Oh. <laughs> uh, it well, doesn't matter what we sure, said. Yeah. No, I, I just want to make sure that we have a very clear understanding. Yeah. We want to go into this project, obviously getting at all 04 done and according to plan. Mm -hmm. And then the hope is to be able to continue to uh, look at the plans with the contractor and the architect for adult 01C as well as adult 02 mm -hmm. to uh, try to continue to value engineer this uh, in a way that doesn't uh, significantly impact the quality of the product, but could potentially bring the 
cost down um, in an impactful way. Yes. Correct. But if those solutions are not do not present themselves, then to move forward as as currently designed. Correct. That is my motion. That was much more articulately stated. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I was trying to listen, so I. I, <laughs> I appreciate that because I didn't want to repeat it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So we. So then we have a motion. I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. Um, no. Now public comment. Any public, no public comment? comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One second. Yes. We're, get, we're getting this. We got this, guys. We got the process. Steven. Yes, if you sign a, um, an agreement knowing that you haven't actually uh, specified all the work that you wanted uh, in the original proposal, basically what you're doing is committing the board uh, to a basically writing a blank check here. Uh, there will be no way to control costs once we get into it. Um, and I, I, I don't think this is ready for vote tonight. You really, more details need to be worked out. You need to actually specify these ad alts and not just hope that things are going to get better. Get them, get ahead of, get ahead of the problem. Um, the uh, specifications in this uh, uh, courtyard are actually kind of unbelievable. Um, you're using ultra luxury materials. I like Epe, it's beautiful wood, but it's the kind of wood that you would see maybe in a rock star's, you know, hilltop getaway. It's, I, I challenge you to find a single maintenance facility, not only in Marin, but in the entire state of California, maybe anywhere in the country where such materials are used. I would offer that uh, we could do a very credible job um, using a more conventional approach, which would be a fence uh, bordered by high hedges. This would be completely appropriate in the setting, the woodland setting. It wouldn't, uh, it would basically hide all the, all the activity behind the fence just as a as a normal fence would but it would actually look a lot a whole lot nicer um, now maybe you love Epe I think it's pretty but I would ask you to also think of some of the other projects that we w might want to do with that money for example uh, restore the horseshoe pit put in some bocce courts where the uh, 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 the maintenance facility is right now. These are sp actually small projects. We could actually do them in-house. With the money we s save doing them in-house, we can get a whole lot more done for the community. Um, this is not ready for prime time. I understand we're all faced with the issue of, of inflation, but I actually think we've got a professional um, uh, landscaping crew that can do much of this work. We can cut this, uh, the outside work to a minimum, and we can get a whole heck of a lot more done. I do think that we need additional staff with uh, uh, different skill sets, maybe some more equipment, but I think ultimately we would be better off long term. So don't vote for this project tonight. Let's give it some time. Stephen. Can I clarify that we are not voting for the expensive Epi Wood? We're looking at using Redwood. That that was what this um, proposal was about right now. Um, we have vetoed the more expensive wood. We are looking at the Redwood. Correct, correct. Eric? You're correct. Uh, I have Bill Hansel, the project architect here too, and he'd like to comment. Do you mind if I uh, bring him over to comment? Yes. Lisa? Mr. Yes, please. One second. Bill. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Great. But directors, thank you. Um, okay. Well, it's, it's just a little bit hard to, you know, listen to the person who, you know, corralled a small group of people to delay this project by a few years, which tripled the cost. And now we face these increases. Uh, you know, uh, 
the general managers address the inflammatory factors, uh, you know, correctly, and it, it's really a shame. But we're seeing that across the board, and frankly, it's just not going to get better. Um, and uh, I will, I did want to point out a couple of additional things to you. The um, since the, since last year, when that original uh, bid was put in, we did take the opportunity in this bid to to already value engineer a few things. Uh, the the original um, structure of fencing had more a greater number of posts for greater stability. So I spaced those out a little bit further. We reduced the the dimensions of the rolling gate and, um, you know, tried to give a little bit more information on that. Obviously included these different wood types to give you some um, perspective on on those costs. Um, and, you know, despite, <laughs> despite the fact of taking those cost cutting measures, um, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're still faced with this. And I just kind of wanted to harken back to, Years ago, when we embarked on this journey of having all of the public engagement, we did present an, uh, a bunch of studies with the staff needs and square footages. If you go back to the original um, uh, needs analysis and the square footage, I completely understand um, Eric's you know original proposal to you. I really appreciate your your discussion, but um, you know my concern I was going to add in there was was really the fact that the the square footage is necessary, and if and you know we would find that we would need it in the long run. This we would find it needed in the long run, and it is true that um, one important thing about breaking up projects is that you lose the efficiency of um, the common aspects. For example, you know just the to start up and close down costs for a contractor gets to be more. So if you split it in half, you're not going to get half the cost. You're going to get actually more than the whole because you, know, you have to repeat a lot of steps. And it is true, as you pointed out, um, there would be a, you know, potentially a difference in quality, definitely a difference in aging of the, of the look. And really in the long run, you'd be faced with uh, you know, potentially even more costs. So I do think that it's a good approach. And, and, and frankly, from a contractual side, um, by a, approving it as, you've, uh, as the motion states, it will allow the contract to proceed and the contractor to feel as if they're, you know, secure in, in what the upper end of what they envision. And um, I know it's a little bit hard to envision, but the, on that east side, um, you know, we could cut down the, the retaining the amount of concrete uh, because we don't need the retainage on that side. Uh, it was a prudent way to try to protect the fencing. Uh, for those of you who have, you know, fences that contractors have just put uh, wood right into the ground, you know, does not last as long as if it's up, if it's embedded in concrete, that doesn't last as long as if it's on a short wall. So we have to have that on the west side. We can cut it um, on the east side. We could even look at the gate there. I think there's a number of things that, you know, I uh, could work with Eric and the contractor on, on cutting that down. But I do think it's prudent to kind of, you know, approve the upper, upper amount. And then finally, the last thing really is the county approval was for the completed project, including all the landscape and the past and the entire picture. And my concern would be that, you know, if we continue to break it down into pieces that we're not delivering on, on that approved total scope. So really tough decision. We never should have been in this first place in this situation in the first place, had we been able to just proceed as we wanted to, uh, you know, three years ago, but uh, it is what it is. And, and, and I think when it is done, um, uh, you know, you will see the public really enjoying um, the, you know, the finished building and, and, and the landscaping. It's also important to note, as Bill made a really good point about the final grading, the existing grading, uh, there was a lot of dirt excavated and it was piled up against the temporary fence. And that really needs to be completely, um, uh, you know, spread out and spread around. And, and the project uh, will not be done done until all of that is accommodated. And that affects the, you know, the path. So it'd be terrific. Um, despite the cost to have to, to be able to get all that stuff done. So anyway, thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So thank you. Bill. Thank you. There you go. Does anybody want to amend anything or should we just go for a vote? What do you think, Lisa? I think we go for a vote. Okay. So before you vote, I'll repeat the what's on the table. Right now you're accepting at all 04, directing staff uh, to work with the contractor and the architect in potentially uh, 
value engineering at all 01 key, which is the eastern courtyard, as well as at alt 02, which is the pathway. Um, and if solutions are not possible for that to move forward um, as constructed, as bid, and as designed. Yes. Correct. Correct. That's what I'm thinking. That's my motion. Yeah. Okay. We're voting. Go to. Oh, wait, do we, we don't need a second, right? We've had a second. You were I the second. second. I was you the second, second, right? Yeah, okay. So I thought I did, but I just want to make sure. I mean, it was about a minute ago, but yeah, it was you. Okay. <laughs> Board President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oyserman. Aye. And I Director was. Shea. Aye. Thanks. Thank you. All right, moving on to item two, resolution number 2022-10, determining the 2022-2023 appropriations limit on tax proceeds. Uh, yeah, this, uh, you know, it's a pretty brief staff report. This really is a ministerial action that the board has to undertake every year. Um, all, all formulas and math from here come directly from the State Department of Finance. Uh, I included a letter or a link to their annual letter that comes out every year in May um, that does not represent an increase in any way of tax levies to residents. Residents are going to be taxed at the same amount regardless. And it just simply ups what is known informally as our tax spending limit that each public agency uh, has in terms of how much they can spend in a given year of tax revenue. It's based, uh, the growth factors and the change factors are based on both uh, cost of living, uh, i.e. inflation, as well as any population changes. All of that data comes directly from the state of California Department of Finance. You can see the second page of the resolution shows what it was last year. It shows what the change factor is for this year, and it simply does the math. But you have to have this every year. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution number 2022-10. I'll second. All right. Any comments from the board? Questions? All right. Anything from the public? Yeah, one second. I guess it's easy to spend other people's money, but... Um, you know, I'm just absolutely blown away that now all of you have uh, spent the maximum amount of money ever spent per square foot on a maintenance shed, basically. If you look at that structure, it's a very simple structure. And you have been buffaloed by uh, the gentleman... Uh, who uh, attacked me after the last uh, thing. And I, I got to tell you, um, yeah, I guess you can spend it all. You can spend it all on frivolous things. I would hope that you would spend it on good things. And that's why just about every meeting I've said, bring us your vision, bring us your passion. But there seems to be absolutely no... Uh, no no thought about how we can spend our money and make it go further so uh, yeah appropriate yourselves all the money to spend but please consider the vision that you're creating the future that you're creating you're creating debt for the community and you know what is the value why are, why do why does our open space look so scruffy why don't we have money for trails why don't we have money for uh, just basic maintenance. It's not because of the money, it's because of the spending. Thank you, Any other comments? No. 
All right, I'm going to do a vote. Board President Shea. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oyserman. Aye. And Director Shea. Aye. Thanks. All right, thank you. Moving on to item three, fiscal year 2022-2023, publicly available page schedules of all positions. We're looking to approve this. Motion? Or anything else? Would, any, uh, Eric, do you want to? Uh, I did. I, what I put in the report, I, again, this is an annual requirement of uh, governing bodies of all public agencies. You have to, on an annual or at least a biannual basis, update um, the pay schedules that are publicly available. Uh, there's really no changes in here outside of what the board is already well aware of and has uh, approved or authorized either with the budget or with the memorandum of understanding, uh, as well as changes in, uh, in uh, minimum wage. We, we discussed this multiple times during the budget approval process. So this is not something that we are voting on without having had discussed previously. Correct. Correct. And just, and I don't mean to open Pandora's box, but this also puts us in a position should we have to fill positions currently at a competitive rate, correct? Um, a, a, a more competitive rate than they <laughs> are at currently, sure. Uh, I don't know that I would go as far as to call it a competitive rate, but it <laughs> Still is on it the is very low end. And yes. I will say, you know, just kind of in follow up, especially on the PR side, um, you know, much like how the fire department uh, and their labor group, um, you know, has the right to negotiate wages, uh, hours, and working conditions on an annual basis unless an agreement is formed for a longer period of time. Uh, unrepresented employees, we really, you know, one of the things we talked about, you know, back at that, uh, what was it? Uh, March meeting was that, you know, something that we wanted to start putting together shortly after the beginning of the fiscal year was to uh, create a process by which at least um, things like wages and potential wage adjustments would be reviewed on an annual basis uh, and kind of have what those factors would be that would uh, potentially allow the district to be able to adjust wages on those portions, but at least on an annual basis, they are looked at and reviewed. Okay. But again, nothing here isn't what was already included in the budget that was approved in May and wasn't already thoroughly discussed at that meeting in, in uh, March or, or when the memorandum of understanding with the firefighters was approved back in October. Oh, I recall. Okay. So we have a motion? No. Can I just make the motion to approve the fiscal year 2022-2023 publicly available pay schedule for all positions? I will second that. Thank you. All right, any comments from the board? No more? All right, any comments from the public? Yeah, one second. Yes, our employees deserve competitive wages and our public deserves competitive services uh, rendered. Um, I, I, I don't want to... Uh, I'm just so surprised how little accountability is asked for by the board. Um, I've been to other... Uh, meetings with other in other municipalities and they're much more rigorous in um, uh, dealing with the, the uh, business of the community and I you know I, I, I don't know one thing that you also need to keep in mind when you look at a salary you're basically doubling the cost to the taxpayers through uh, additional benefits so we're paying a uh, very, very competitive wages as compared to the general public. Um, I want to keep them competitive, but I also want, you know, full work days and full reporting and full accountability. And like, for example, this evening I asked about whether our, uh, uh, 
our, our building was paid for and it was non-response after non-response, that's simply unacceptable. And I don't know why you accept it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Um, okay, so are we ready for a vote? Board President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oyserman. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And then we are tabling item four, moving on to item five, district-wide capital needs planning review. Right. Thank you. Uh, again, pretty detailed um, staff report in here. I try to give you guys um, and I certainly want to go over uh, what's on these worksheets, but one of the things I was really trying to get across in my uh, staff report is that, you know, in addition to capital needs, you know, we certainly have a lot of other factors that compete for what are ultimately very limited and finite financial resources. And all of that needs to be considered when, you know, kind of making these plannings and, you know, thinking strategically about how to, how to best expend finances. Um, I've kind of listed out, you know, what those kind of the big ticket items there are. Obviously, you have, uh, uh, you know, OPEB, which is essentially retiree health um, that right now has a net liability at, you know, 4.39 million. You have a pension that has a uh, net uh, liability at 5.38. Um, we have started to address the OPEB, but we haven't necessarily started to address the pension. Um, both of those are actually in the process. We'll be getting a updated full uh, OPEB valuation actuarial report coming up here in the next couple months that will be presented to the board at that time. Um, and uh, pension will have a new valuation that comes out in August that will be analyzed and presented to the board at that time. And then also, you know, big picture things to consider are, you know, the continued establishment of reserves for the past five, six years, the, you know, financial strategic plan for the district has been to you know grow and stabilize our general fund i actually think that we've done an incredibly um, admirable job at doing that in a relatively short period of time where you know from june 30th of 2015 it was at 1.83 million to june 30th of 2021 is now at uh, uh, 6.35 million and that all comes from our audited financial statements um so that has been the focus, that has been good. Uh, and in summary, capital needs and expenditures are certainly a, a critical function of the district, but they do need to be taken into context with other, uh, uh, other items that are competing for these financial resources. So when you're looking at these, um, all of that needs to kind of be considered and look at this kind of as what I quoted in here as a, as a financial balancing act, because again, we do have finite resources. I, I do think we've done a, a very good job managing finances and have moved in the right direction. Uh, that said, um, I just, I felt that I had to throw that out. So that way, when we start looking at these capital expenditures, it can, you know, kind of fall into line. I, I think on things that are certainly needed, we've done a good job at moving forward as needed and presenting them to the board and incorporating into budgets, uh, even leading up to our largest capital expenditure, which we just talked about, which was uh, the park maintenance facility, which um, by the way, uh, had a total contract for 1,103,830 eight dollars and 19 cents to which we've paid the contractor one million ninety three thousand eight hundred and eighty eight dollars and eighty eight cents and have a total balance remaining of nine thousand nine hundred and forty nine dollars and thirty one cents on that contract uh with that said that has been the massive capital expenditure that we've gone through um and that is one that you know unfortunately was deferred for 10 15 20 years even and and now it's finally uh, at the point of being right next to completed, which is going to be great. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out too, is I know a lot of times, you know, when we sit here uh, and a lot of this is just because it is top of mind. Um, we look at a lot of the park and rec because that is mostly what the public interact with. Um, but the fire department certainly has large capital needs and certainly has very expensive equipment and uh, certainly serves an incredibly critical function to the community. And it's one of those things that you don't realize how much you appreciate it until you need it. Um, fire engines aren't cheap. Things like that aren't cheap. Um, their equipment is not cheap. It's very expensive as well. So we try to look at all, all of that. Um, when you look at these 
spreadsheets uh, that there is a lot to um, the top really just kind of uh, shows what the items are in some cases when uh, staff has uh, a timeline on when we think that expenditure is going to come come up um, the bottom is looking at some of the major expenditures and says you know in an ideal world um, if we know an expenditure costs x amount and we know it's going to last for y number of years we should be dividing those two numbers together to put those into a reserve so when the expenditure comes up rather than uh, you know looking at either financing or finding a way through operating revenue we actually have a capital reserve in place that this can be pulled from um, so that's what these two documents are a couple of the other notes i wanted to bring up on uh, on the 21 if you look at the park and rec for starters uh, first off any of the things uh, that are highlighted in yellow those are either historic or have been uh, expended this year um, the ones that are highlighted in light green, obviously, um, were also Measure A funded expenditures. Thankfully, it looks like Measure A is going to pass with flying colors, so uh, we can expect to be getting more revenue and to be able to offset some of these expenditures coming up. Um, some of the ones for next year, it's highlighted in green at only $45,000 for the play structure replacement. Um, if you read the note on the side, that's actually the portion that the district is required to contribute towards this. Um, grant funding is picking up another $177,000 of that project. Um, on the firehouse side, um, oh, I'm sorry, on the park and rec side also, the ones that are in the 21-22 column but are not highlighted, um, those will be pushed and have been pushed in the budget to next fiscal year, um, simply because it's, these are mostly items that until they actually break, we don't need to go out and replace them. Um, and while we have an estimated life and we figured that this would be the year, they've hung on. Uh, one of the big things I do want to push and notice on the uh, fire department side is there certainly is a need in that building to do some modifications within the building that are specific to uh, both gender and ADA compliance. Um, primarily, if you look at the bunk room in there, we have a, a single bunk room that exists in our fire department where we have uh, nine Murphy beds that pull down out of the wall. Uh, so essentially when they go to bed, they all sleep in a dormitory style room. Uh, we have one of the oldest fire department, active fire departments in the county. I could tell you that that's not, while that used to be common practice in the day, it's really not common practice anymore to have that type of a sleeping arrangement. Um, Chief uh, White and myself have gone through there. I've talked to them. Uh, one of the projects we certainly want to look into uh, potentially for next fiscal year is doing some, uh, some non-load bearing framing in that room and being able to take that room and create three separate sleeping spaces. In the event that we have a female hire and we hire a female firefighter, um, we do not have a good setup for that right now, uh, given the fact that everybody sleeps in one room and we don't have a lot of privacy in there. Um, there's also some updates that need to be done to the bathroom areas, um, possibly another door installed there so that uh, one of the sections can be also a little bit more private, not to mention, uh, you know, the tile and the showers is going to need to be replaced relatively quickly. So there are there is some work coming up to that probably uh, with the not this coming fiscal year, but with by the next fiscal year that's going to need to get completed. Um, by all means, Chief, chime in if there's anything I kind of missed on that. Um, this is not an action item for the board. This is really something so that the board does understand that staff are constantly looking and thinking and talking about this. This is not a new document. This is something we've had in place for a long time. We revisit it as needed and at a minimum, uh, always take a good hard look at it as we start moving into every year's budget process uh, and the creation process. So we do have a, an eye on this. Uh, we are certainly keeping out, uh, uh, up on what needs to happen. Uh, all staff are being incorporated into this process, so it's, this is an active, an active process. Thank you. For, yes, thank you. Go ahead. I have one question, just because I do. Um, for the apparatus, for the engine, is it leased, and then do we turn it back in? Because I know you mentioned we might have to, we have to outright buy it and we pay it over all those years no when we when you can see the remaining uh lease payments on there we will own it at that point in time it's just the type of financing was called a lease that when you do these in municipal financing it's not like uh 
going down to the car dealership and taking out a loan for it. It's essentially a loan, but it's just a different uh, financing vehicle. So then in three years when it's paid off? We, it's paid off. It's ours. We own it. They best not break up that, right? Yeah, well. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but it's in but, our... That we might right. need and, and at that point, it'll be a 10-year-old fire engine. Yeah. Uh, you know, fire engines aren't uh, necessarily Toyotas that run for uh, 25 plus years. So I think Chief White could probably attest to that. They're a, a, a piece of equipment that gets heavy, heavy and hard use. And that's uh, one that we have because the, I see the wild land one is Santa Fels. No, the wild land is ours. We own the wild land. What Santa Fel, uh, uh, what Santa Fel oh, loaned to us was a, a utility pickup truck, four wheel drive pickup truck that was already outfitted to serve as a fire uh, response vehicle. Sorry, my eyes didn't follow the line correctly. That's my all right. <laughs> okay. And I didn't mean my joke. Sorry. I, Chief, did you want to add anything in here? I feel like uh, you kept trying to speak a couple times. Oh, it's okay. I was just going to mention that uh, you've done an excellent job, first of all, um, getting things set up so that we're purchasing to own. Um, and the rig should be in fairly great condition, despite, you know, it being a 10-year-old rig. So we hope to get a few more years out of it. On average, um, especially depending on how busy a, a company is, you look at probably extending upwards of 15 to 20 years for an apparatus before you replace it. But, you know, the, the, the wheels are already turning for a potential future apparatus replacement plan. Um, but in the meantime, we've got an excellent apparatus and uh, in three short years, we'll own that rig. And so that's a great thing. Um, but just keep in mind, as Eric said, you know, a lot of wear and tear on these apparatus. And then as you move towards the future, there's going to be a move towards electrical rigs. Right now, they're extremely pricey, upwards of three or four million dollars or more. I think Menlo Park was looking at one maybe about two years ago, and that was high priced. But um, they haven't quite figured out how to make the pump operate uh, at maximum capability using an electric um, apparatus and electri electrically powered rig altogether. But those are things to start looking at down the road as, as society starts moving away from gasoline and diesel powered vehicles. We're gonna to have to make some adjustments and it could be a fairly pricey thing to look into. Um, but one of the other things you can do to extend the life of your rig is also go ahead and have it refurbished again. So you might be able to get a little more time out of it, but depending on the price, it may not be worth it. It just really depends on how competitive it was. A few years ago, it was something very competitive right now, given the increased pricing on apparatus well over a million dollars now. Uh, you may be looking to spend a bit more to refurbish. So it could be counterproductive. It just really depends. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if Luke is available or had anything he wanted to add on to the, uh, onto the park and rec side. He had to run really quick, it, it looks like. But uh, if he comes back, he might have something to put in there. But are there any questions about what this document is or says or does or how it's created? No, but this is, this is incredibly well done, Eric. Thank you so much. Super concise. And I love all of the coding and how you explained all of it to us as well. So appreciate all the work you put into this. Thank you. I appreciate it as well. I like that we get to look at a bigger picture of all the finances when we start really discussing money and budget and what really we can address for future to keep, you know, to use our money wisely. Well, well. And I think over the next few months, that's going to continue to play out. Like I say, we're going to have updated valuations on our OPEB uh, liabilities, on our pension liabilities, um, as well as, uh, you know, we'll have our year end financial statements uh, coming up here, uh, you know, shortly after, well, the year end. Um, so it, it kind of helps, you know, look at this from a, a big picture 30,000 foot view, um, which I think is important <laughs> when you're looking at these things. And thank you for bringing up the gender side of the firehouse. It's been on the radar and it's just, it's something that needs to happen. So, perfect. Appreciate that yeah. as well. No, thank you for figuratively and literally giving us the bigger picture. <laughs> I may have squinted at the smaller picture and then realized there was a bigger picture. And go ahead and laugh, Kathleen. But, um, I do appreciate it. And um, yeah, it will definitely. I did help. bring readers just in case I had to.
follow the line and I still messed up. So. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions on it? This is just an item for review. Uh, something to kind of allow the board to digest uh, kind of where we stand on our identified capital needs planning um, and how that looks at this current point in time subject to change as early as tomorrow. <laughs> I think we're good. Do we need um, to do public comment before we move on to the fire district? Matters. Um, we know we have um, public comment. Yeah, that's what I'm oh, saying. Yep. Do yeah, we? one second, Lisa. Yeah. It's great to uh, see, the, you know, the potential areas that we need to fix up in the future. I think that's just good planning. Uh, however, I want to caution you uh, about this planning. For example, um, the board planned uh, for the maintenance facility to cost anywhere from fifty to two hundred thousand dollars, and that was discussed for a number of years. Uh, pricing went out, um, and we found that we could build it with uh, prefabricated uh, equipment. Of course, we lost control of that uh, process and uh, we're building uh, Mr. Hansel's dream project. Um, and I question uh, some of these uh, uh, projections. For example, when we uh, replace the pool uh, and possibly the fencing, will we put up redwood fencing, Ipe fencing, or maybe we would just stick with the uh, favorite uh, chain link fencing with uh, 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 shrubs behind it like we have now. Um, you know, I, I kind of feel like, you know, these meetings, these projections, it's, it's all fantasy based and it's not, the pencil doesn't get put down to the paper enough with enough rigor um, and you get presented ideas and they're kind of loosey-goosey and maybe this, maybe that, maybe we'll, we'll have add-ons and stuff like that. And, you know, basically you're, you're spending the public's money without really an idea of a bigger plan. And I ask you to, to refocus and l when you walk down the trail and you look at, say, the horseshoe pit, and it's, it's well used, well loved, but it looks like crap. And why is that? And the reason why is there's no vision, there's no uh, managerial discipline to uh, maintain that area. And I, you know, this board really, I, I think, can do a lot better. And I think you would feel a lot better about your contribution if your ideas can uh, be put into place. So um, anyhow, uh, let's talk about the future, but let's not forget we live in the present. Thank you, Stephen. Any other public comment? Uh, yeah, one second, please. Bill. Uh, thank you. Um, directors, I, I, I wanna, I wanted to comment to compliment you and to compliment the staff, but you know, once again, I have to say that the, the you know amazingly libelous, untrue uh, BS that you constantly have to put up with from Stephen Estelle is just astonishing. How he just totally lies. So anyway, so I will you know stick to a positive side of things in that this district has done amazingly well under uh, under Eric's. Uh, you know, direction and your leadership in the last few years. I remember 10 years of meetings where we didn't have anything like this kind of an economic picture where we really struggled. And uh, it's, it's really been great. And I compliment you all on, you know, what you've been doing. Um, I will say that, you know, part of my time I spend now uh, managing a fire district. I've been doing that for a, a year and a half. I previously managed a fire district for a, a year down in Muir Beach. Um, and uh, I, I do really appreciate the attention, uh, your attention to the fire station issues, because it's something that <clears throat> I was aware of a long time ago on the board. But um, I will say things like the accommodations, um, you know, really need to be addressed. It's, it's not just a matter of doing the right thing. It's also a matter of liabilities. Um, 
and uh, you know, that the district would face if we were sued for having the proper facilities, proper uh, accommodations. Um, that goes for accessibility, it goes, it goes for gender, kind of across the board. And I've spent the last year focused on fire station design and fire stations because my district that I, that I manage is undergoing a, a plan to do a seismic renovation, which frankly is about 25 years out of date. And uh, in 1997, um, there were concerns that were raised about, uh, you know, similar things to what, what, what we have. There was the seismic issue, but there were things about uh, accessibility uh, and, and space for staff. Um, it's really amazing to me that the staff can do the job that they do, not just the fire staff, but the, the management staff and the park staff <laughs> walking in, uh, you know, to the offices that we have and the space we have. And uh, it, it's, it's really great that they do such a great job with such um, constrained uh, quarters. And I know the challenge of that directly, as I said, from the last year, I've been looking at other stations, um, the, st the district I manage is very, very similar. It's the exact same size as Marinwood. We have one station. We have a relationship with uh, El Cerrito that's similar to our re relationship here with San Rafael. So um, I really appreciate your looking forward to, uh, you know, the future. And when these things come up, uh, you know, really understanding that we don't really have a lot of discretion. They have to, they have to be done. And uh, I do compliment, you know, the staff on the work they've done here. And uh, we have had visions for quite a long time, and we can. And I know it's great to see that they, those visions continue. And uh, you're all doing a great job. So thank you. Thank you, Bill. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, so then, I guess we can move on to fire department matters. Item one: draft minutes of fire commission meeting, June seventh. Director Kilkenny. So first I'd like to add that I was at the meeting for most of it, even though I'm not on the minutes. Eric. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I will I will change that before it gets <laughs> before it gets to be voted on. <laughs> Just thank you. Thank you for attending, Director Kilkenny. <laughs> Well, I, I did for that's why I said most of it, because then I had to log off really quick. But um there's so I really don't have anything to report from this meeting that won't that I don't want to take away from the chief's wonderful report. So I don't really have anything to add right now. Thank you. Just that I was there. Okay. Right. Awesome. <laughs> well, without further ado, Chief, the floor is yours. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, Director Kilkenny, I think you would have done an excellent job of summarizing the activity. So feel free next time. Um, <laughs> can I can I stop for just one second, Lisa? I'm really sorry here, but uh, if we're if we're still on the minutes, um, we need to take public comment on the minutes before you move on to the chief report. Oh, oh. Sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, chief. I didn't mean to cut you off. It's okay. Public comment on the minutes. Yeah, one second, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the report, uh, which unfortunately uh, we didn't really get much information about what is going to be discussed. I'm sure Chief White will have uh, more information for us, but it's unfortunate that we do not have detailed reporting on our uh, on our commission meetings, it's a very simple matter. Just press record, um, and then you have a public meeting. Um, I don't know why people want to be secretive. Perhaps they want to be unaccountable, but that's not correct. Now, I, I do uh, also want to uh, note a couple times, uh, and I'm going to direct this to you, Lisa. Uh, you know, you let Bill Hansel attacked me personally twice, and I really object to that. I did make some comments about his work as an architect. Uh, we did get a, uh, uh, a foreshadowing, I guess. Uh, he's very interested in, in the project of redoing the firehouse. So um, beware, beware. You, you're in charge of the district, not Bill Hansel. And he should not be um, saying the things that he says, and he should, uh, he really needs to uh, step back. Bill Hansel hired our, 
our general manager, and they seem to have a very convenient relationship. Uh, we initially were told that he was going to charge $13,000 all in for the maintenance project, and boy, did we blow past that project. Um, we need to control our future. This is not, the, Bill Hansel is a member of the community, but he is not the community, okay? All of us are the community and uh, you need to keep that in mind. So anyhow, uh, with regards to the, the uh, minutes, thank you very much, and that's all I have to say, thanks. All right, thank you, Stephen. Let's move on to Chief White. What, is there more, is there another comment? There is another comment. Um, um, before, all right. Can, can, I, can I say something before we start these comments? The, Bill can comment back, but um, I would like to stop the back and forth between these two. I understand that there is issues that both of them are bringing up and both of them are not being very kind to each other. This is not a public meeting where two individuals are getting to libel each other. Let's please stick to the district matters at hand and not thinking above and beyond what is currently being discussed. I understand nobody wants to have things said about them during a meeting that is being videoed and, and published, but this is not the place or the time to be harassing each other. Thank you. Thank you, Svan. That is definitely necessary. You ready? Bill, would you like to comment? Bill. Yeah, that was going to be my point, uh, asking for a point of order to stop Stephen from doing that, because uh, obviously, that's you know, I wish I could attend all the meetings every month to, you know, constantly defend against his, um, you know, his complete untruths. But I can't do that. And uh, I don't think it serves anybody's time. But um, I asked the board to, to stop him, um, you know, from doing that because it's, it's really uh, exhausting. Right. Thank you, Bill. And I think to Savan's point, this the, the point of these meetings is to discuss board matters. And to Savan's point as well, and I think I think we can all agree this this is not a forum for name calling for libel. And I would appreciate it, and I can I hope I can speak for the the board as well that we would appreciate it if comments could be specific to the board matters that we are discussing and not name calling of anybody they're another member of the public member of the board or a member of the staff thank you so with that i would very much like to hear chief white's report Okay, looks like I'm clear for takeoff here. Uh, no pun intended, but I just saw Top Gun on Sunday. It was an excellent movie, better than the original. So anyway, moving forward to MWPA, um, Executive Director Mark Brown and Ann Crelock took the fiscal year 2022-23 work plan before for the Board of Directors on May 19th, and it received approval. I just want to advise that the Ops Committee, Advisory Technical Committee, the ad hoc committees, the finance committee, the sound practices partnership, or excuse me, ecologically sound practices partnership, and the citizens oversight committee all had the opportunity to weigh in on those proposals. And we're really looking forward to getting that work going effective July 1st, a new fiscal year. Those, uh, as a reminder, those proposals were building on the previous two years work that has been undertaken since the measure passed. And those uh, involve local defensible space and core allocations uh, to be funding uh, the current, yet, uh, current year's risk reduction efforts. Um, those projects will continue to center around the shaded fuel breaks and non-shaded fuel break areas. Some educational landscaping that we're lo looking to put forward to um, the community. Direct assistance coming from the Fire Foundry, not AmeriCorps this year. Uh, goat grazing and uh, evacuation route management and uh, vegetation clearance. And so with that, uh, a lot of activity already underway. And I'll tell you more about some of the things that are taking place 
under the vegetation management aspect of the report. But I do want to start to state that um, we've hired several defensible space inspectors. Um, one is returned from last year. We have uh, two, um, excuse me, five total, three new individuals um, and two women who just joined. One of them was Maddie Chapman and another is Don Hernandez. And they all have um, a commitment to doing the best possible job. We're, we're excited to see Maddie return. We're excited for Don's background and expertise in getting this work done as well. And the newer inspectors include Trevor Bloom and Jack Goggins, who are using tablets in the photos that uh, were provided here, tablets and clipboards as they go about taking photos and getting inspections done in various areas of the community. Um, the inspection staff conducted inspections on Idleberry Road and uh, nearly all the homes are back up to open space and they timed those inspections so that the work could be done in advance of the fire safe Marin chipper days that are upcoming. So hopefully all of that's working in um, succession as, as planned. Uh, recently, one of the inspectors, uh, Brendan Clifford, I believe it was, uh, went to Commissioner Pascal Carcenti's home and Commissioner Carcenti wanted to make sure I understood uh, how great the service was that you received from that particular inspection, uh, inspector rather. And so he made comments and just said he really uh, appreciated the interaction he had with Mr. Clifford during the inspection. He found him to be very knowledgeable um, and passionate about wildfire risk and he really felt like it was a great interaction with them so he just credited him, credit gave him credit for being a credit to the organization and so um, we've been really fortunate to have a lot of individuals who are getting that sort of feedback 90% um, of the time every now and then we get you know somebody who has a concern or a complaint but it's very seldom so it's just you know speaking to the quality and caliber of folks that are coming to do the work in our um, in our um, neighborhoods and communities um, I also want to state that additional wildfire mitigation work has now been finished, goat grazing in the open space areas and fire road mulching on Queenstone Fire Road are all now done, according to my staff. The fire foundry crews are also working to, to reduce risk in the neighborhoods. And that, that assistance, as I stated earlier, is kind of replacing the work that AmeriCorps crews have you know, historically been performing in the community. So we're... we're um, fortunate to be utilizing local talent to get a lot of the similar work that we had been accustomed to getting from individuals who had come from volunteers from across the country, as an example, on numerous occasions. Not to say returning, but we're certainly um, fortunate to be able to utilize the services of some local effort through the fire foundry. And so um, there are some homeowners who have some very labor intensive or heavy lifts, if you will, and those fire foundry crews are doing a great job of trying to remove juniper and Italian cypress and some of the other um, vegetation that are on their property that would have been very expensive or very labor intensive to do. I did get a concern recently um, regarding one of the committee members in Terra Linda who had some frustration with the direct assistance. And they stated that I, I believe there are stumps that were remaining and those stumps um, kind of detracted from the overall look, but the, the disclaimer is we already claim that there's no stump removal available. We're looking to see what we can do to address that situation. We have equipment called masticators that really can get some, some headway on those stumps and, and the removal, but it, I think it really depends on the terrain and location. So hopefully we don't have a, a, a recurring thing here with those types of complaints, but I'm putting it out here now just ahead of it, just in case any of you happen to hear from someone who's got concerns about some of the fire foundries work removing some of the, the um, uh, flammable species of trees such as Italian cypress and juniper. So um, six properties so far in Marinwood uh, since the relaunch of the direct assistance program a couple of months ago have received help from the fire foundry crew. There's six more additional residents as of last week who have applied for the direct assistance and we're hopeful that we can get them included in the next round of that direct assistance, which is going to be the week of June 27th through the 30th. Um, we're not really clear on how many of those properties the fire foundry is going to be able to get to and, and complete, but we're hoping that it's likely going to be all of them, but more to follow on that. And in the photo, um, I just wanted to, to show what the fire foundry crews would look like with the apparatus and with their attire on. So you can kind of get a sense of how they, they look and how they operate with their equipment a little bit differently than the AmeriCorps crews have in the past. 
Um, vehicle fire at China Camp. We had a, what I believe was a, a, a stolen vehicle, an abandoned vehicle um, that was located at China Camp, Engine 58, got out on scene and, and um, took care of that situation there. But there was no one around and nobody to, to be able to claim the uh, rig or the vehicle, which was engulfed in flame. And uh, that being said, it looks suspicious. And so we're going to treat it as a suspicious fire. Thankfully, it wasn't really very close and proximal to any vegetation. Otherwise, that could have been something that would, would have really created a significant issue. Or if there were high winds, we would have had some serious concerns. Looking at it, it's still on the, um, the gravel there. But depending on the wind, it could actually push over another maybe 15, 20 feet and create some issues. So really fortunate on that incident. Um, you know, I would cover COVID. I'm just going to say, you know, we're, we're masking up again in a lot of locations. And instead of speaking about all the variants and everything else, uh, including the office at the public safety center now, um, I'm requiring staff to, to mask up just to ensure that we're, we're not creating an issue for one another because COVID is seeming to run rampant again with some of the employees and or some of the employees, family members. And uh, as a result, even my own daughter, the unvaccinated daughter, who's chosen not to be vaccinated. She tested positive a week ago and missed her graduation last Thursday as a result of that. So we've had other staff who in the office have tested positive. And so we're just, we're seeing this wave occur. And so we're trying to make sure that we're um, doing our due diligence whenever we're in enclosed areas so that um, we can reduce the potential risk. But uh, I'm hearing and reading that the, the surge may have crested. I don't know how true that is, especially since we're just now starting to see uh, folks getting out of classrooms and getting into um, the summer months. So it's very possible that that's, that's true. Uh, I'll be able to tell you more within the next 30 to 60 days if that's really trending in the opposite direction. And then last but not least, I um, want to report that our crews have, I think, broken the record from what I've seen as far as the lowest times in my two plus years here, five minutes, 16 seconds. I don't think I've seen anything lower than that. I remember seeing 522 maybe as the lowest, but I got to go back and double check this. So don't quote me on it just yet. I felt like it was 520 for a long time. <laughs> I, yeah, see, it may have been 520. I remember a two being in there, but um, that being said, um, five minutes, 16 seconds. That's excellent. They're doing an excellent job of getting out the door and getting on scene and they continue to do that. They're probably one of the best, if not the best I've seen in the region. And so um, this is something to, to really take pride in on how our crews are being so responsive and so deliberate about getting out the station and getting on scene to give people who need um, assistance the opportunity to get it as quickly as they can. So just wanted to share that. And then last but not least, I want to thank the members of the community for all the work they've been doing to reduce vegetation. Uh, it's, it goes without saying that all the projects that we have through the MWPA and all the work that's being done and supported by yourselves and, and community members themselves, if they hadn't been doing this work, then our, our footprint wouldn't look as good as it looks right now and wouldn't be moving in the direction we'd like to see it move in. And so I give credit to everybody recognizing full well that you know, they have a role to play and a responsibility to help make sure that their own properties are using the house outward approach, but also doing so so that their neighborhoods are ultimately safer. And in the event there's a, a situation that erupts, my thought is, and this is maybe wishful thinking, but this is my thought, we won't need to evacuate because there won't be a right, widespread incident because everyone's done enough to protect their own properties that there's not really a need to evacuate. Maybe a warning is a, the extent is that it goes to, but not an actual order. And so that's the ultimate goal. Um, although we're planning and prepping to ensure that if we do have to, to evacuate, we're able to, the goal is to do enough vegetation removal so that it's not necessary. And we're getting closer and closer every, um, every year as we continue to con um, work on projects and expand the work that we're doing. So credit to the community. And with that, that concludes my report. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. I hope your daughter feels better. Hmm? I hope your daughter feels better. She's, yeah, she's better. She's uh, talking back again already and just her <laughs> usual self. So, yeah, <laughs> she's doing better. <laughs> Thanks. Is that, is that how we all treat, like, 
No, our kids are feeling better is when the comments are back. Okay. I thought it was just my hands. Okay. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, I think it's pretty <laughs> universal. <laughs> you got the sandwich down this way instead of that way. Wait, you cut your kids' sandwiches? Just kidding. Kathleen, I know. I know. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Oh, you're welcome. You're okay. welcome. And hopefully we can uh, continue the amazing work that you guys are doing and, uh, and look forward to hearing the new plans for the year to help our guys and possibly soon a lady out in the firehouse. <laughs> uh, public comment, Lisa? Yes, any public comments? Yeah, one yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, Chief, uh, thanks for the report. Um, you know, this month I heard something that was a bit disturbing about your uh, local fire inspectors. Um, a friend of mine has a house uh, he, that has natural wood siding. It's basically expensive i think clear cedar siding with a clear uh, varnish on it he was told by the inspectors that he would have to remove it to be compliant with fire safety and i told him i didn't think that sounded correct because you know all of us live in wood houses or at least most of us do and uh i don't think that that's one of those uh, uh unusual fire risks but I might be wrong. Could you, could you just tell me whether or not that sounds correct to you? Uh, uh, maybe there was a miscommunication. You yeah, don't have comments, um, Stephen. That's that, yeah. I just I, I, I'd like to to hear the answer to it because it was, it's concerning. It almost sounded like you mentioned there was a varnish on this the surface of the wood, and that's something I'm not truly familiar with but yeah if there was a wood roof then we certainly have a concern there but not necessarily on the siding of the house however wood has actually been something that we try to veer away from um, for obvious reasons because it, it is um, potential or susceptible to flame and so given that stucco is usually a little more preferable or some other sort, sort of tile but that being said I'd have to actually see what you're referring to a photograph would help and then I could you know, compare that to um, existing ordinance and information that I can confirm that this is approved. But just hearing it, it's very difficult for me to say yay or nay, but I would certainly discourage wood siding if at all possible. So if this gentleman has a question, who should he reach out to about the evaluation? He can contact Manny Albano, and that'll be manny.albano at cityofsanrafael.org. Thank you so much, Chief. And I think the evals actually have a follow-up contact information as well, and they're provided with those reports. Uh, one more comment, Lisa? What? Bill. Bill. No. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Um, I just want to bring up a couple of things. Uh, I really appreciate um, the work on vegetation management. Um, I mentioned before my, my role in uh, the fire department in the East Bay. Um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be a, a part of a whole bunch of uh, Hills Emergency Forum, um, which is groups of uh, different fire agencies, emergency agencies um, in the East Bay and the East Bay Hills. And uh, the, the approach to vegetation management is very aggressive. Al Cerrito, including Kensington, um, my district, uh, we do inspections. We inspect all properties from the street. We issue uh, notices. Uh, there's a whole process where we have repeated warnings. And then if the residences don't clear their, their um, you know, ma manage their vegetation uh, to the standards that the district set and that the city has set, then they're uh, given notices for remediation by private contractors. And then we charge that work back to through the tax system to um, uh, to those residents and those properties. And it's a system that really works because um, usually we have about 60 or 70 in just in the Kensington community and that gets quickly down to about five or six or even uh, we're able to you know get those people to finally clean up when we when we sort of um you know threaten the the tax uh measure 
it is something that we talked about a long, long time ago and didn't really understand the mechanisms for. Um, and now I've been a part of seeing how those mechanisms can work and the ordinances can work. And I'd love to see that in our community. I'll, uh, you know, mention specifically, it's on my mind because we have a, a house on Appleberry in the 600 block, which it's looking very bad from the street again. Um, you know, being concerned about that one. I know there are others. I did want to ask a, a general question, um, uh, which is I'm not sure when what the communication is with Marin Public Works in terms of the road uh, clearing. It seems like this here on the north side of Lucas Valley Road against all of the you know Marinwood properties, including mine, that that is um, the grass is getting pretty out of hand. And I would have thought by now it would have been cleared. And then the last. Um, question for you is really about the Waldorf school. Um, and over the last, I'd say like four or five years, uh, the school always had a practice of having sort of straw bales for various activities, which is great for their kids. But then they started to distribute it. Uh, last year, um, they basically broke up the bales and distributed them all around their grounds and, and even into the, uh, the, what we call the coffee walks, the walkways that go into that property. Um, you know, straw in I think you would agree <laughs> embers catching straw and then floating into the air is, is not good practice. So I, I just like to ask if you would um, talk to um, Marin Waldorf about, about what they're going to do this year and just keep an eye on, on that particular practice because it's, it's not very safe. Thank you. Okay. To go to your first point. Um, uh, I'll start with the latter. Um, I'll have our out our community outreach staff for um, Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority or Emergency Management attempt to reach out to the Waldorf School to find out what their plans are. That's the first I've heard of anything regarding um, any straw or any other bells that are being utilized for the purposes you described. And so I'm not really familiar with that practice, but you seem to indicate that it's been a longstanding practice. So, um, yeah, with we, we clearly understand that, you know, straw can be something that gets airborne for pretty simply and pretty easily if it's um, lit a flame and or if the wind carries it. So definite reason for concern. Um, as far as the Marin County approach to clearing some of the weeds that are overgrown, um, I, <laughs> I could only point you back to Chief Jason Weber and some of his staff to try to get some timelines on what they're doing with their projects and what um, they're doing with open space and with some of the work that they haven't gotten to. My assumption is if it's been done on an annual basis before, it's something that's still on their radar and they have an intention on getting to it. The question may be not if, but just necessarily when. So it could be something that may happen as soon as a week or two, or maybe something, depending on the cadence of when they normally would do the work, could be coming up in several weeks. So I just, I don't know if you could share some of the background on when you've seen the work done in the past, that might be helpful to understand when they're planning to do it again. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. I can hear the firemen out on our call. Firefighters. 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 That's right. Sorry, we did do the. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Our, well, our men, because we <laughs> have go. no women, <laughs> I have. I can say firemen because there are no women at our house just yet. Well, that's. That's one approach, but <laughs> I'm just digging myself in a hole here. I will stop talking. <laughs> All right. All right. Can we move on to park and recreation? Matter? Thank you and good night. Yep, thank okay, you. Good night, you guys. Thank Take you, care. Chief. Sorry. <laughs> good night. Thank you. you. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, hello. Thank you. Hello, Luke. Uh, I will um, just kind of go over a few things on my report. Um, the first thing I just wanted to, to kind of talk about, we, we just started our uh, first week of summer, uh, two days, I guess yesterday, and um, it's, been, it's been going well, you know, two days in, but um, it's, been, it's been interesting. The, the effects of COVID have been very apparent. I mean, camp, camp is running well, the pool is running great, um, but there's definitely a lack of some of the seasoned staff we would have uh, on our normal trajectory if we hadn't lost you know the last two years of normal programming and um and the kids haven't been in normal programming for the last two years uh either and so it's definitely a, a different um we, we can feel the differences and everyone's adjusting and it's it's going to be an interesting summer i think things will normalize and and um 
uh, it'll, it'll just become a, a pretty standard summer, but um, uh, it's definitely some adjustment. And I, I've been struck by just how, um, how big of a, of a staff that um, Robin and, and John Paul and, and our, our recreation staff have, uh, um, have been able to build up over the years. And this, this is, you know, our summer camp is the, the largest day camp program in the county. We bring people from all over the Bay Area. Um, and it's, it's a giant, it's a beast. You know, we have like over 400 kids in the, in the, in the program every day, uh, not to mention all the people down at the pool. And, um, you know, we have four, four full-time recreation staff or, or three and a half, I guess, counting me. And it's, um, and, and so, so much of that is the part-time, this part-time crew that, that we have cultivated and they're seasonal. And we just, we just hope we're going to get them back each summer. Um, and right now COVID has caused a real, um, it's just, it's kind of obliterated the local seasonal staff. People are doing other things. People have moved away. A lot of college kids aren't coming back, um, after the last couple of years. And we're sort of starting, it's a, it's a rebuilding year for us and, and we're, and we're able to do it. We have the staff, we're able to run our camps at, at our normal, um, kind of capacity. We're able to run the pool. There are no lifeguards out there. We've got people calling. I've got phone calls every, uh, every few days, people looking for lifeguards for their pools, um, and there's just, it's a real lack of, of that, that demographic in the, in the workplace for, for a number of different reasons. But um, because of the, the programs we've built and, and the way that, that our um, staff has been able to, our, our full-time staff has been able to cultivate this culture um, at, our, uh, at our camps and at the pool, um, you know, we're able, to, we're able to make it work and we're actually getting by. A lot of places have, have way scaled down. And um, I think that's why we've seen a, a huge increase in demand as well, is the other programs are a lot smaller this year. Uh, the pools have limited their hours. They're limiting their swim lessons. They're limiting their programs, um, and, we're, and we're running our normal our normal gamut. And so, um, I'm very proud of of our of our staff to be able to do that. And um, and that that's it's actually um, I think a, a lot because uh, of the the extra time that Robin and John Paul put into staff events, to the trainings, to um, to running you know having high expectations and, and holding everyone to a standard where they they actually find the job fulfilling. And, um, and, and that, that's very apparent. This year, our staff is young, and we're having to train up the next generation of the directors and the supervisors, um, and we're feeling the lack. And uh, you know, Ro- Robin was single-handedly taught, I don't know, like a dozen giant CPR classes this year. John Paul taught all these huge lifeguard classes. We actually won an award from the, Red, the American Red Cross for training so many individuals this year. And that's mostly just us training our own staff so that they're certified and, and well-trained in CPR and, and lifeguard. So uh, I'm very proud of that. And, and we're able to do something, I think, because of this foundation that we've created. Um, but uh, this year we're seeing, we didn't have the normal, you know, um, stair steps. We, we lost a, a couple uh, years of, of seasoned people. We're having to, having to bring them up. And, um, and so I'm just, I just want to give a shout out to, to, to Carolyn, to Robin, to John Paul for, um, they've had to, they're, they're having to put in the extra work to, to kind of, um, fill those gaps and, and bring these young, less seasoned people up to the standard we need them to be to run, um, these good programs. And, uh, two days in, it's going great. So, um, uh, or I, I'm very optimistic and, and I think it's going to be a wonderful summer. Um, but it's going to be a lot more work uh, to get there. So um, I just uh, just want to give a shout out to them. And I'm very, very proud of them for getting us to this point. Um, and before I get further into my report, I, I also want to thank the board um, for, for supporting the parks maintenance staff and, um, and understanding the needs when it comes to the, the parks maintenance facility. Um, we are all, and I, I've talked to the staff every day about this, but everyone is so grateful for the new, uh, the new building and um and for the eventual move in to the new building and being able to utilize that uh this has been a need for for decades and uh, these guys have been working in, in subpar conditions for so long and they are so grateful and um and i'm incredibly grateful on their behalf tonight for um the board moving forward with us getting those courtyards completed and and doing it the right way um so i very much appreciate that and i know on behalf of the staff they very much appreciate that so thank you um, for, for seeing the need and, and supporting the staff to, um, it, it, it helps, you know, have the, the grounds and the facilities to do what we do. Uh, it's, it's so important to, to running these programs. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so things are, are, are going really well down there. Um, and I, th- I think we're going to have a really good summer. We're excited for the return of music in the park and our summer brew fest. Um, the, I, I still, 
we're finalizing the full lineup for of all the bands and everything, and we'll we'll be putting that up on before before the uh, before the first installment. We'll have the information out, I promise. Uh, but we're getting that lineup just completed, and it's going to be great. And I know it's going to be or, or a lot of pent up energy for that. We're going to have a big turnout, and um, we're just making sure we have everything in place to be able to accommodate that. So we're really excited. Uh, more details come on our website and through some emails and lines things. But um, our first uh, Music in the Park installment will be um, a week from this Friday. So it'll be next uh, on June 24th from 6 to 8 uh, in the park. And it'll be uh, just the same good old fun that everyone's Can we do an Instagram post and Facebook and stuff to just get yeah, out we'll, there? Yeah, okay. we'll have all of our, we'll, we'll get out there. I mean, we're not trying, I mean, we'll make sure all of our locals uh, know about it. We're not trying to make this into too huge of a, of a thing. I mean, let's be honest, who's following us but our locals, right? That's good so. point, yeah. No, we'll make sure everyone knows what's going on. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have it all out um, uh, by the end, hopefully by the end of this week, early next week. So people uh, will. I don't think we're going to have a lack of people at Music in the Park. No, we get several <laughs> phone calls a day wanting to know, you know, is it back on? Like, when can I set up my blanket? Can I get my spot now? It's like, no, no, it's, a, it's coming up. So, um, uh, so yeah, we're really excited to, to be resuming all that and, and um, on all, all more information as we finalize everything about all that. Um, and um, and then just on the on the park staff side, um, I just wanted to, to say that our new maintenance worker, um, Caesar, has been working out great, and the staff is so thrilled to ha to be made whole, at least in whole in our, our humble modern sense of, of having three full-time workers. Um, we've been able to start getting caught up on some things that, that had been going by the wayside as we only had two people working in that department. Um, and, and I don't know if you guys have seen, but we've been doing a lot of work around the community center, sprucing up the landscaping and um, getting everything prepped for summer this last few weeks. Uh, the turf is, is looking good going into, you know, all the foot traffic that we now have every day. Uh, hopefully it'll hold for the for the rest of the summer and um there's been a lot more work done uh around the parking lot and around the different areas in the park to to make it look good and and uh spruced up for for the, uh, the all the extra people coming for the summer programming so um i've been very impressed with what the staff's been able to accomplish now that they've got a full crew working and um and caesar is at the ground running he's got experience he hasn't needed to be trained on every little thing um and and so it's just been we've been able to kind of just hop right into things uh very easily so that's been um that's been really nice and we're happy to have him uh upcoming um projects that, that we'll be looking at there's going to be the, the crew's going to be spending a lot of time out at creekside park um getting things kind of uh spruced up out there and re kind of giving a little bit of a facelift to the landscaping, uh, making some repairs. There's some retaining walls that need some work, some trees that need to be trimmed, and, and some irrigation things that need to be rerouted. So we'll be out there for a little while uh, in the coming weeks. Um, they're not looking good now that we've kind of done, done the front part of the, of the um, community center, and then we'll go from there. Uh, but overall, um, going into the summer, feeling good about things, and uh, um, just on both sides, both staffs, the, the, the morale is high. Um, and uh, everyone's, you know, kind of ready for the summer and we're feeling good about it. So happy to, to go into any of this for, in further detail or any questions if anyone has anything. For me. Thank you. I have a question and I guess it could have been uh, during the fire part too. Are we doing our pancake breakfast? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, so did Eric's not shaking his head. No, the pancake breakfast uh, was traditionally kind of Organized and put together by the volunteer fire department, which really hasn't been active at all since the pandemic hit. Oh. Okay. Well, then I don't have to rush back the 4th of July then. Nope. <laughs> um, I do want to thank all our staff for everything that they do. You guys are small, but mighty, and you guys really handle a lot. It's very, very impressive from inside the building to outside the building, you guys all, and you two as well, manage it all. Hats off to you. Thanks, Kathleen, appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just gonna echo it. I mean, I'm at the pool a lot. I was there for pool parties for the school and everything. And the fact that yourself and Robin and John Paul and Carolyn have all been on deck at one point or another, either guarding or running the, front area. I really appreciate that you guys are jumping in where we 
we can't find personnel, the seasonal personnel, so that people in our neighborhood, in our community can really enjoy the full Marin Wood experience. So, I mean, seriously, thank you for going above and beyond. And just so you know, the parents that I've talked to and the kids that I've talked to have had a blast the first two days of camp. So um, whether or not we have more training to do or something in the background for house, the kids are having fun. And that's, 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 that's great. I appreciate that. It's good. It's good to hear. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll piggyback on that. Both of my kids are in camp and I don't think they've ever been more happy or excited at the beginning of camp as they are, have been these last two days, seriously. Um, they're, they're, they're having a great time. Um, I see the other kids there. They're also having a, a, a wonderful time. So whatever you're doing, it seems to be working so far. So thank you for that. Well, I appreciate and that. Your staff. Um, it's, you know, it's, uh, and I'm really excited for music in the park to return. I can't wait. Um, do we know um, how many we're going to have? Is there a schedule for oh, it? Yeah. And we should, uh, I think we've got something listed on our website, but it's not, it's not super in your face, but um, yeah, they're, um, they're every other Friday, there's four um, evenly spaced throughout the summer. And then like the kind of the middle one that would be like the fifth right in the middle is actually on, it's the Saturday brew fest. So that's sort of the five events this summer is four music in the park nights. And then one Saturday, um, the brew fest event, uh, which is also kind of like a glorified music in the park um, during the day. So that's um, all that's up there, but we'll, we'll be pushing it out a little bit more once we have a little few more things in place for that. As everyone knows. Great. Yes. I'd be happy to, to share the word too. Do we hire the music or is it local people that volunteer or I'm just, just asking. Uh, no, yeah, we hire, we hire the, the, the musicians are paid for, for coming to play. Nice. All right. All right. Thank you. Any other um, any any co other comments from the board? Let's see the black box over there. <laughs> Public. Uh, yeah. One second. Yeah. yeah if. Uh, if all of the programs worked as well as the summer camps, I'd be thrilled. Um, we do our summer camps well, and I'm really glad that particularly this summer, um, there's a lot of energy and kids are having a blast. They need a blast. This is a time, uh, this is their youth <laughs> that they missed for the last couple of years. And so keep up the good work. Um, if the uh, rest of the park was as well maintained as the community center, I would also be quite happy. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, and unfortunately, too, that with all the focus we have on the summer camp and the young kids, we forget that there are many more people in our community, seniors among them, people, childless couples, and what have you. But, you know, I ask you, what, we're, what are we doing for them? I know they're doing stuff on their own. I'm, I've actually uh, done some programs um, in the park, music programs. I know that there's a uh, senior group that meets in the park in Quietwood Grove. Um, it seems like there is zero energy put on the recreational needs of our, uh, the other population that lives here. Um, how's the study for the uh, pickleball courts coming along? I brought that up about four years ago, and some neighbors came in to speak. That never was advanced. And um, I, I think, you know, we have an obligation we, uh, to our community members to, you know, serve all of our community members. Um, glad we're doing music in the park. You know, who's that targeted to? Is it just targeted to the same people, or are we trying to broaden the audience uh, uh, that would attend there? Um, I, I think it's quite important. And lastly, um, 
I do want to say a couple things about um, the Marinwood Community Center. Um, this is controversial, and uh, uh, but uh, we have not been renting out that facility. And uh, prior to that, uh, we we did have quite a few rentals. It added income. But more than anything, it, it added a place for people to gather to do their important family celebrations. And I would like to, us to open ourselves up to the broader community and make our community center available. Now, I know one of the reasons why we stopped doing this was concerns over sound. There needs to be some, uh, we need to take care of that. Um, but it's all doable we can we can do this we shouldn't shut ourselves off this is not a country club this is not uh you know a, a parents uh, uh pta this is a full community and we need to reach out to the full community um keep up the good work you do good work uh luke and i do appreciate all the good work and when i you know, bring up some of the things that I don't think are done as well. I want you to know that I think you need additional. Thank you, Stephen. We're over time. Thank you, Stephen. I, I do have a question just to go, and I'm not trying to add on to him, but are we... I know that we used to rent it out is renting out our I'm not asking outside our community or however you guys choose to do it or how we chose to do it before. But are we at a place where we will be taking rentals soon or are we still keeping it limited? Uh, um, right now, uh, we are the facility is being used by, for um, some classes and our classes and programs. We are not um, doing private indoor rentals um, at this time. We we're okay. renting out our two picnic areas in the park and our two pool party areas for private events. Uh, the community center is not being rented out for private um, private one-off rentals at this time. Okay. Perfect. All right. Moving on. Thank you, Luke, again. Um, your presentation and we can move to board member items of interest and request for future agenda items. Just an update on whatever happens and if we can get stuff down. And an ETA of when the guys get to move in. We will keep you well informed. And the music. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have that up soon. <laughs> Check the website. Oh, doesn't, doesn't have a lot of specifics, but it'll, it'll be specific. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing. All right. Then um, can we move to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I'll second it. Great. Bill, you're so quiet. Do you get that, Tiffany? Request for future agenda items. Do you have any future agenda items, Bill, that you would like to? I personally do not, but we have to open it up. Oh, we do. Okay. With public, any public comment? Sorry. Stephen. Steven. Uh, there was discussion, but it didn't occur this evening, about uh, future projects. Uh, uh, Jimmy Juarez obviously wants a, or, or the, the Juarez family wants a uh, park bench uh, uh, dedicated to Jimmy. I love that that idea. But let's look at that as an opportunity. That is actual, actually a, a good project. It wouldn't cost much money, and I do think you ought to discuss it. It's just quite simple. Um, uh, and while you're at it, uh, putting in some bocce courts, which have uh, long been requested. This is ways we can reach uh, additional population besides just the school-aged children. And lastly, I do think there needs to be a discussion on the use of alcohol 
or actually I would call the abuse of alcohol in our parks. It's really gotten out of hand. Um, you know, the Friday night frat parties. I mean, I love those guys. I love the guys, the fact that they're, they're there socializing, but they're setting a horrible example for the kids. They're good people, all of them, uh, but uh, I think it's really become excessive and uh, the board really needs to address this before someone gets hurt. Thank you. Stephen, any other public comments? We are talking to the Juarez family about what we're doing with the bench and stuff for them. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Well, it was already approved. And it was approved, and they're talking about the exact placement and all that stuff. Sean, behind and, I the have, scenes. Sean and I have been communicating. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that I don't think it's, I don't believe that it's my role as a board member to go down on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday and manage whoever is in the park, the, the horseshoe pit, or anywhere around when. I just don't find like it's my role. So I appreciate your feedback and I feel like, and you're welcome to give it, but I don't feel like it's my role as a board member to go manage our park or our horseshoe pit. So that's just me. Thank you. Now, can I make my motion to adjourn? Please. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All right. I am unmuted. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. Director Kilkenny. I. Director Oyserman. I. Director Shea. No. 947. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, you can stay online, but I'm Thank going. Thank you all. Appreciate <laughs> your Thank time you. tonight. All right. Good night, guys. Have a great Bye. night. Bye. Have a good night, Pleasure. everyone. Have See you next night. month. Have a happy, well, have a happy fourth. <laughs> Thanks all. Yeah. Bye. Recording stopped.